Yo, Sleepy Sheepy here. Today we're going to be looking at a really fun build, and that's going to be a main hand sword spear with an off hand Nagakiba. And I feel like these two weapons synergize super well together. They have a ton of pressure. You can go for a running light attack followed up by a Nagakiba. And the Nagakiba has a super mean backswing that can easily roll catch your opponents in a way that the neutral light attacks don't. So it's just really fun to play with these two weapons together. And you also have the opportunity to really vortex your opponents just with the varied timings. The Nagakiba comes out just slightly differently than the timing of the light attacks. And I feel like you can use that to your advantage. I frequently would go for running light and just follow it up by a few Nagakiba swings and successfully deliver a lot of damage. So this is going to be on a pretty straightforward dex build. We'll have 62 dexterity with Millicent's prosthesis, 20 strength, and then 60 vigor, as well as 40 endurance. And then we'll also be trying to really go for those vortexes or high damaging moments that result in successive attacks. So Rotten Ring Sword Insignia, Godskin Swaddling Cloth and Millicent's Prosthesis are all going to kind of encourage us to go for a bunch of successive attacks at land. The playstyle for this setup involves a lot of different things. You can go for a jumping heavy attack followed up by a light attack. You can go for a light attack followed up by just another light attack, which will usually catch your opponent unless they immediately roll out of that. And then you can also go for a light attack followed up by an L1, which also usually connects and you also have access to different Ashes of War. For me, I went for Thunderbolt on my offhand, just because it might be a nice way to catch an opponent that's kind of out of range of your setup, especially when they're low on health. And for a high dex build like this, that can be quite helpful. And then Sword Dance on the Sword Spear is phenomenal. You also get this follow-up hit that a lot of people don't know about or just run into. Uh, I've been guilty of that myself and can deliver a lot of damage and has a ton of hyper armor. So tons of good options here. You do have a nice crouch attack that I feel like gets slept on a little bit just because the halberd comes out with so many different options and a nice running heavy that comes out as a sweep. So when you feel like your opponent is trying to strafe you and maybe get a backstab, you can go for a running heavy and connect on your right side. And then if they go to your left side, you can just go for some Nagakiba swings and that will oftentimes catch your opponent as well. So tons of different playstyle options that make this a really dynamic build and extremely fun. That pretty much covers everything that I wanted to say about this build. If you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I'd definitely appreciate it. But let's go ahead and jump into the invasions and duels. All right, so starting off, we're gonna have a 3v1 in Landell, which is one of my favorite areas to invade. It was one of the first areas that I started invading in regularly before you could invade anywhere with a single click of a button. And we're gonna be playing against three players that have a pretty strong setup against invaders. So one has Moonveil, one has Pulley Crossbow with Bleed Bolt, and then the other player has the Reduvia, which is going to involve some of the Bloodblade Ash of War, which is quite strong and does a lot of bleed buildup. So we're gonna back off a bit and try to get some early hits in with the great bow we're not really trying to kill anyone with this but we do want chip damage and we also want to prevent them from potentially buffing which we do right there so we're going to back off a little bit again and switch over to the sword spear as this player with moon veil comes in we start to aggress a little bit because they're teammates are not really helping them out in that moment, but here comes the player with the pulley crossbow and we do need to back off. We do use the PVE a bit to just kind of block those bolts coming in, and I definitely recommend kind of positioning yourself like that, so if you have big PVE, can block some of those projectiles for you, which is really nice. And in this moment, we're going to see how strong the offhand Nagakiba can be. It doesn't have the slowness or you know potential to get clipped on things in the same way the sword spear does and so we're able to just kind of keep swinging and really do a lot of damage to a player that doesn't have a lot of poise and so those poise breaks are going to be super important in that moment where we're able to finish off the player with the moon veil now we're going to reset to neutral here a little bit we've got quite a lot of blood loss buildup and the pve behind us is doing some chip damage on us so we're going to go ahead and get one great bow shot off and then finally catch up with these opponents and here we start getting a lot of damage on the phantom we're kind of ignoring the host which is just kind of more my play style we want to finish them last and at this moment a blue comes into the world now kind of predictably they're afk which means we're allowed to land a jumping heavy on them get that true combo and follow it up with a light attack. And that's one thing that I really like about that true combo is anytime you see an opponent that is maybe healing or something, you have that opportunity to kind of get them for two hits rather than just the one that you would normally get with something that doesn't true combo. And we do get a nice backstab on the host. And again, we're kind of fishing at this point as they're going for a lot of swings with the watchdog staff. 
and we just kind of need to be wary of their hyper armor because it can do quite a lot of damage and really kind of negate what we're trying to do with our build but colossal weapons are quite susceptible to backstab so we're able to ravioli step in and then just roll in for a backstab now this next invasion started off very strong with almost killing the host that's rune arced uh, we do back off for a second mostly just so we can enjoy the full 3v1 and get punished for it with hand of elenia which you know does quite a bit of damage these days and has many many poise breaks so we need to back off get around the corner and now we're going to be playing a little bit of a game of peekaboo with these players we don't want all of them kind of swarming us we'd like to get one-on-ones the best that we can and we don't want to get hit by any of the spells that are coming our way if we can get some frostbite damage off in the mix, that's going to be great and also mean that our weapons are doing a little bit more damage, so we kind of keep that in the mix. Here, I really thought my jumping heavy would connect, but the hitbox just didn't line up with the player going for the black knife, and so we have a hard time, you know, connecting that damage, and we do take some hits that reduce our full HP, but in the process, we can get a hit with the sword spear and then the off swings with the Nagakiba are just so strong and that's why I like this build so much is the Nagakiba is not like a backup weapon it's not it is kind of a chip weapon but it's in it like it's super effective it's not just like oh here's a little bit of damage and a little bit of poise chip damage it's like you can really get blundered by the Nagakiba and you need to look out for it in the same way that you need to look out for the halberd especially with the lightning infusion it's very strong and that's really a, a nice reason to have it lightning infused is because you can focus on that if your opponent goes for something like black flame protection or something that's going to negate a lot of just physical damage so having that option on hand is, is fantastic um, now again we're backing off a little bit trying to get the most out of our heal with some talisman and armor swaps and now we can aggress on this hand of melania player we do need to look out for these spells that are doing so much damage but we get our running heavy in just in time and manage to kill the hand of melania player as a hunter gets summoned in so just kind of uh, a classic game of peekaboo here where we're running around the corner trying to bait them forward as they get isolated for a second we try to deliver as much burst damage as possible and here we're kind of just waiting out these barrage of incantations these skull emojis are you know you just want to wait them out you don't want to try to aggress into them the poise damage on them can be very problematic and result in just getting blundered so kind of taking your time is kind of my uh, recommended playstyle, and here we're punishing them a little bit for their lack of aggression by getting some buffs on ourselves. I was hoping to stagger this player with the gravity phones or gravity fans around the uh, corner there. It did not work out. They were successful in delivering the Adula's Moonblade, and we do need to back off a little bit. But we can see those buffs really helping us. The um, uplifting aromatic was quite helpful in that moment and here we're aware that that particular spell doesn't start doing damage until a little while later so it's totally fine just sprint into it and try to deliver damage in that moment and here we finally catch up with the runar toast they're going for a lot of sword dance which has a lot of hyper armor so we kind of recognize their sword dance and use a bit of sword dance of our own our damage is going to be much higher we've got an a scaling in dexterity and we've also buffed our weapon with the lightning grease so just super strong action of war potential there and the damage is quite high moving on we have a player that's going for again some skull emojis they've got a kind of scary setup just because if they hit you with some of those skull emojis and then you get hit with the blasphemous blade it can be very problematic but they don't have a ton of health so that allows us to get them very very low but we need to back off because the pressure from this halberd player is quite strong and we need to make sure that we reaction roll their attacks just because they can roll catch chain us with their running light attack which you know is what we're trying to do to other people so we don't want to get kind of caught by our own strategy we see some incantations coming in from the other phantom but they've not really they're not really contributing too meaningfully in this we're using the pillar to just kind of block those skull emojis and we get some alone time with the other phantom just kind of ignoring the, the incantations and that allows us to just kind of blender them and that's really where the strength in this lies it's not super amazing when it comes to multi-opponent situations but when you have just a little bit of time with one player you can deliver so much damage so fast and the pressure can be so strong that it's you know just one of my favorite setups um and we'll see this a little bit later actually in this invasion how the power stance katanas can actually really complement some of the deficiencies of this setup when you have multiple players that are coming after you so 
I would say switching to uh, two katana setup is very strong, but also switching to uh, more running heavy attacks and crouching attacks is also going to kind of help you as a get off me button, where you can go for those kind of sweeping attacks that will catch multiple opponents with a hit stun simultaneously. So. In this invasion, we know that we don't want to just stand in the middle of the road and get hit. We were hoping to knock some players off with the Great Bow as they come near this kind of uh, a little bit sketchy area, but we're not able to connect our hit, so we need to back off a little bit. And we go for a nice frost pot here. We do get some damage, but it's not enough to actually get the full frostbite. So kind of an unfortunate moment there, but we're able to roll towards some PVE here and try to hopefully get them baited into the mix. Gives ourselves a little bit of breathing room. Again, we go for a frost pot, uh, hoping they're gonna come through the doorway and get off a nice sword dance. But before we're able to finish the kill, we do get caught by spinning slash on the Crescent Axe, which is pretty scary. Uh, but we're just baiting them towards more PvE, trying to get it a little bit more complicated in the mix. And this light roll build is something we'd like to finish off if we can. We get quite a bit of damage, and before we're actually able to finish them off with the Nagakiba, they are able to heal. So the light roll build with a great shield is kind of an odd one and kind of a difficult one to approach in an invasion. So it makes a little bit more sense to switch to something a little bit more burst damage-y and a little bit faster. And that's gonna be the two cat setup that I mentioned earlier. Power stance Nagakiba's is quite strong. We can go for unsheath as just kind of a turn and burn and we get that crouch attack, avoid the parry and then chase down the Phantom with just uh, some light attacks on the main hand Nagakiba. Now we do switch back over to the Sword Spear and we need to look out for so many different things that we get caught by two Gug Swings followed up by Marika's Hammer. I was kind of trying to time my roll for Marika's Hammer and in the process got hit by the second Gug Swing. So a uh, very problematic moment, but we don't die and can just kind of move on to uh, a slightly different approach. We now have the Hammer Talisman applied, which means we're going to be more likely to break the guard of the light rolling player, which is kind of the main goal here. And then we also put on some lightning grease for our uh, sword spear. And I think that was probably the right move just because it gets through the shields a little bit better. But in the process, we do guard break the host and manage to get the repost. Uh, I couldn't really give up that opportunity, but we do have just enough time to land a jumping heavy, get a little phantom range and catch the light rolling player as they run away. So successful 3v1 and moving on to the next one we start things off hot and heavy with blasphemous blade followed up by moon veil followed up by waves of gold uh, a lot of ashes of war that you don't like to see in a small space like that um, so we do get knocked off the ledge but we're able to shoot a great bow shot and knock off the host and with the host down in the middle area i'm hoping that the other players will follow they'll want to defend their host though that isn't always how phantoms play it can be a little bit hard to predict um, we do see some mage spells coming in from one phantom and then the other phantom dropping down. So that's kind of what we were hoping for at the very least. Um, this player with waves of gold, we want to get as much damage on possible and we're just going for great bow shots, getting a lot of them to connect, but as they start just kind of double, triple, quadruple rolling, we decide to switch it up and get a little bit of revenge here, pulling out the Stormhawk Axe, just you know, going for some hyper armor against their great sword swings and just doing the last bit of damage with the Stormhawk Axe. So uh, always a fan favorite and a good way to finish off a phantom using waves of gold. We do switch back over to the Guardian Sword Spear, and now we're gonna be focusing our attention on the other phantom. We get a nice frost bot, <laughs> a nice frost pot proc on the, the phantom here, and they aren't running very much, uh, very much armor at all. Uh, I think they are light rolling, but we're able to catch them for a couple hits that do just a ton of damage, and then just a jumping heavy. That sweep is really, really nice. Uh, here we were hoping for a backstab against this host, but it doesn't connect. We don't even get the grab, and we do need to back off a little bit. So I was thinking about pulling out a parry shield, but I see that blue has now been summoned into the world, and this next sequence is going to be uh, a lot of mistakes that are quite unfortunate. So here we hope to grab a jumping heavy, eat the entire moon, and then get hit um, just quite hard. Here we use the pillar to heal up a little bit and we did not learn from our previous mistake. So we land our frost pot and then jump in again, hoping to land that heavy. Instead, we eat a uh, comet that just does a ton of damage. We get hit by Blasphemous Blade. It, it's very problematic and we almost die. So here we really need to make sure our rolls are timed correctly just based on the sounds we can hear behind us, but we also need to be looking forward so we can get out of this predicament and get some health back. Uh, then the host does come in and we deliver some hits on them. 
as the blue is not in the mix at this point, and they've got some very nice ranged attacks that can do so much damage. So we're just gonna back off a little bit and use the great bow a little bit, hopefully get some damage of our own on this hunter. We're not totally sure how much HP they have, but here we get a rain of arrows that almost kills both of them. Uh, but this is kind of how I prefer it. I'd like to get that massive chip damage and then come in for the kill with the build that we've set up from the get-go. So. Now we get aggressive again. Uh, clearly we did not learn, so this time we're going in for a jumping L1 with the two cat setup that I've been talking about from some of the earlier invasions, and then we switch back to the Guardian Sword Spear when we don't need that kind of burst damage that comes with a jumping L1 on the Power Stance Katanas. And here we have a weird moment where we don't get hit with waves of gold, we deliver a fair bit of damage, and at this point, another Hung of Hunter does get summoned in. Um, I kind of back off because I would like to either parry this player or um, kill the Hunter. I'm not sure where they're at, but they do show up behind me swinging their katanas, so we switch back to the Guardian Sword Spear, and we are going to go again for a Jumping Heavy, hoping for the true combo, but you can't true combo a player that's already dead. They eat, uh, you know, just a jumping attack for around 800 damage and die immediately. So the blue Estus delivery service is working as intended. The host decides to give up and we get a successful invasion with, I think, you know, five players. So um, that was definitely a fun one. Now this next one, I knew what was going on ahead of time. These players had killed me before. This player that was hiding behind the gravestones was going for Placidusax Ruin. And I really just start spamming the fan daggers, but they are able to light roll away successfully. I get hit with a sleep pot and storm stomp and a gugs attack. So things are not going super well. Um, I thought I would thwart their plan, but kind of the cheeky light roll build gets away and we uh, have to kind of reset to neutral. Now at this point, I know there's three players in the world, but I only see two of them. And here the third chose themselves. They are hiding on a ledge that you can't see and going for some gravity kills. Uh, so just kind of a, a great setup with no cheese whatsoever from these players um, and one that we're going to need to be careful for. So we're going to switch back to our Raptor Talons and really utilize Endure against this light roll player. All we really need is one running heavy attack and we can hit them with the follow-up heavy attack that will probably kill them, especially with how little uh, poise they've got. And here we do just that. We go for Endure before they go for their Madness attack and we're able to successfully get that claw kill. So uh, not exactly the build that we were intending to use, but the situation kind of warranted it. Now, we'd like to kill all the players in this invasion, so we go ahead and use the great bow to shoot our shot and <laughs> knock that player down uh, just before going after the host. So so this is a very silly setup, um, one that I'm sure killed a many invader. So it was nice to kind of reinvade here take care of some of these overleveled phantoms and then just come in with our setup against the host now that we've got uh, some of the cheese out of the way. And we're going to be going for some running light attacks and the hyper armor against this player is going to be quite strong. We need to definitely worry about storm stomp and it means we can't aggress in the way that we normally would because we would just get storm stomped and then they would follow up with their gugs attack. They do pull out power stance claimants which are also scary. Um, Power Stance Spears in general are just a very strong option. We're hoping to get into their um, Storm Assault there just with our Sword Dance, but we're a little bit out of range and we do need to be careful. We don't know if they're gonna pull out something, you know, that's going to stun lock us uh, for several hits and just, you know, <laughs> um, take a lot of damage. So we are going to back up a little bit and then just kind of reset to neutral again. We had a lot of back and forth between myself and this player, but eventually we were able to time some of our hits in between their gug swings. They were going for several heavy attacks and then just a running light attack when they get low on health is gonna be enough to finish off that player. So uh, that was just kind of a fun one that involved a very dangerous setup, but if you can kind of avoid the cheese and come out with the victory, it's a good day. So next up, we're gonna have uh, some very strong setups again. We see some players with uh, power stance Reduvias, so the blood loss is potentially very high. And then here, when we think we're running up to safety, there's actually another phantom that's got the Raptor Talons, and then Waves of Gold comes in behind us. Fortunately, we don't get hit. And then this player with the Reduvia switches over to a Katana and goes for a jumping attack. So we just need to get out of there. And we're gonna go into an area that has very strong PVE. Um, one of the Clean Rot Knights successfully scoops up one of the Phantoms. So you do love to see it. Uh, they are gonna be rotted 
from that, which is great. And we just need to look out for some of the waves of gold and let the PvE just kind of do their thing. So I think if you do encounter a very strong setup, I strongly recommend just retreating a little bit, especially in an area like this where you have clean rot knights to help you out. Um, it can be very difficult to face Reduvia as well as the Raptor Talons and Waves of Gold all by your lonesome. So we go ahead and try to get some Reign of Arrow shots off and just, you know, whatever we can do to negate some of these very high damaging weapons. The host dies to PvE and we do get a Running Light attack to finish off the Phantom. Now, this one was uh, not super challenging, but it just kind of goes to show how useful it is to be patient at the start of an invasion. Had I walked into that, I probably would have died just getting stunned by everything repeatedly, and those Ashes of Wars just combo with each other quite nicely. So we go ahead and back off, and now that we know what the plan is, we can aggress a little bit more carefully. So we go ahead and land our jumping heavy, followed up by light attack true combo, wait for them to heal a little bit, and grab that running attack that does finish off that player. And now it's just a one-on-one -on -one with the host. We grab a rolling ravioli step, which can be quite nice for roll catching, uh, especially after a running light, and then just get a couple swings in with the katana to finish off that player. Now, this last invasion of the showcase is just a little bit funny. Um, I kind of went in with the intention of wanting a ravioli step backstab, and I saw the two Kevins, and that kind of was like, hmm, this might be a good time for that. Um, so we go for some running light attacks, and this first Kevin does not have very much health, uh, so very unfortunate there. But we do see a lot of blasphemous blade attacks. So here's one ravioli step we put out. Uh, we do get one little bit of chip damage there, but doesn't really make too much of a difference. And at this point, I was wondering how ravioli step backstabable the blasphemous blade ash of war was. I figured it might give you kind of nice timing because it takes a little while. Um, and there's no kind of horizontal hitbox associated with it. So here we do get that ravioli step back step that we were looking for at the beginning of the invasion, and we can kind of move on with our day. All right, so to start things off with the dual portion of the showcase, we're gonna be playing against a player with the Black Knight Halberd. They've got the Ritual Shield Talisman on, so we're gonna go for an early Fan Dagger and just wait for a roll and go for a nice roll catch with a light attack. Follow that up with some swings with the Nagakiba. We're actually gonna jump their Flaming Strike and deliver a true combo. And then we just wait for a roll with the Nagakiba and catch it. So a uh, nice one-on-one -on -one there without taking any damage and we can move on to the next one. This player is somebody that I've played a number of times. They have uh, very good fundamentals with this setup and do a lot of damage. I know that they like to start things off with a running heavy. So I go ahead and try to avoid that, wait for it to come out and then poise break them twice, just once with the sword spear and then again with the Nagakiba. And I'm trying to make sure that I keep my attacks varied. I don't want to become too predictable. And here, as they run in, I'm able to catch them one more time with the Nagakiba. So I've lost to that player a number of times, and it's always good to kind of win with a new setup and uh, finish off a player that's uh, quite strong. So moving on, we have a player with a Nagakiba themselves, and they're going for a number of sword dance attacks. I feel that sword dance is strongest when you have a player aggressing and you can kind of use the hyper armor to just negate whatever damage they have coming your way and you'll probably win the trade. So I'm going to be trying to focus on that with my sword dance and here we can see as they roll in we go for sword dance, catch them for one of the hits, grab another hit with the Nagakiba and then follow up with a roll catch on the light attack. So um, a strong setup with the sword dance on their end but also a strong setup with sword dance on our end. Moving on, we have a player that had really good spacing and movement. They're going to be running a Lance and going for Sacred Blade pretty early, and they do have an offhand dagger. We're able to land our jumping heavy followed up by light attack true combo, which is really nice. Puts them in kind of a tough spot very early on, and we're able to actually roll their dagger. So uh, a little bit dangerous had they gone for a Lance attack. I think they would have gotten me there, but we are successful in avoiding any damage up until this point where we do get hit by the dagger. The best way to approach this is is to really just focus on the lance, try to roll that, and then just space the dagger. But uh, sometimes, you know, fear kicks in and you do end up rolling the dagger and just kind of hoping they don't go for a lance attack. So we're just kind of spacing each other pretty well. They end up getting hit by a light attack. They're just within range. We follow that up with the Nagakiba swing that also catches them, and then one final Nagakiba swing to be successful there. 
Now this next player goes for crab early on, so we're gonna go ahead and use it ourselves and then just try to avoid their incoming damage with the frost pot. We're actually able to knock them out of that animation and grab a couple hits for quite a bit of damage. Um, you can just see how quickly this type of setup can start doing damage that is like very hard to <laughs> deal with. And here they pull out a parry shield, which means we're gonna go for a jumping attack. We do end up landing that true combo and move on to the next one. So this player is running a greatsword. Um, I didn't see a ton of greatswords during this play, but we're gonna need to be weary of the hyper armor involved and just try to space things appropriately. I think the halberd is a strong setup against great spear or great swords. Uh, just having that running light attack that you can get after they go for a great sword attack is quite strong. Here they get an unfortunate pivot that results in three hits, although one of them is a trade. Uh, we're able to avoid their heavy attack, and then we get that jumping heavy true combo. So. The jumping heavy true combo is just so deadly, especially in the arena where, you know, you don't get the opportunity to heal and you just take about 800 damage all at once. It's it's very problematic um, and quite a strong option on the sword spear. So this next player is going to be going for some spells pretty early on. We're going to be trying to strafe them and not get roll caught. Uh, getting too aggressive when a player has got a setup like that can be very problematic. And here you can see just the absolute vortexing potential that comes with a setup like this going for change ups with your nagakiba and then change up with your um, sword spear if they're not rolling out they're going to be in a big pickle so moving on we have a player that's running the cestus with some lightning grease um, we're going to try to not let them approach too quickly and anytime they do get too close to go for something pretty fast and poise breaking uh, the nagakiba is a great option for something like this because you can just kind of stay still as they start coming in and start going for some swings they are able to get a nice reaction roll catch with the heavy attack so we do need to be very wary of that um, and then we just kind of dead angle our next attack because we don't want to get hit by a running light attack on their end so every time they come in, we're trying to make it very hard to approach. And here we do get a jumping heavy followed up by light attack true combo. Um, we were doing a little bit of kind of the direction change jumps that you can get um, when you're unlocked. So I definitely recommend using some tech like that because the, the jumping heavy is just so strong. So this next player is gonna be running the sham shear. Again, kind of hard to approach, but we do get that direction change on the jumping attack followed up by a light attack and then just some Nagakiba swings. So um, really the play style isn't too complicated. The damage is very high and the ability to play against this setup can be you know, very, very difficult. Uh, again, we have this player that's running the lance with the offhand dagger. We're able to land a light attack just very quickly. We get that backswing to connect. We go for a jumping heavy, but it doesn't quite land. So we're gonna have to back off. Uh, that's one thing that I would say about the jumping heavy is it can be very tempting to go for it just constantly because of how much damage it can do. Um, I'm pretty guilty of that. You can see me going for it again here. Um, but it's important to incorporate other things, especially the swings with the Nagakiba, uh, because you'll end up too predictable and your opponent will punish you, especially if they have a long range weapon. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments. If you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I'd appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day.